Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, April 10th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good weekend. I think the weather worked out for the most part for Easter plans. It did, and we're swapping stories about everybody's Easter weekend, but we jump right into a Monday, and we're at 63 degrees. Sarah is in for Justin. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, you know, we did have those stubborn clouds yesterday for most of Easter. I'm pleased to say we are going to see a little bit more sun today, but we also have the potential for a couple of pop up showers in the afternoon. Not everyone is going to see rain, but maybe a little bit will fall over the recharge zone of the aquifer where there's been no change in the last 24 hours. Unfortunately, today, if you're wheezing and sneezing, molds and oak are the reason. We are seeing high oak and mold counts, pecan and grass are low, but let's get to it. Let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing outside. Take a look out with live cam right now. You can see those clouds and temperatures generally in the low to mid 60s, 65 at Stinson, 62 JBSA Randolph in the Converse area. And as we take a look at clouds and temperatures, you can already see there's a few uh, holes in the clouds, especially across the hill country areas south toward Laredo, seeing a little bit more sunshine than around San Antonio right now, where it's 60 in the Lotus, 60 in Boulevardy, 59 at Bernie Stage Airfield. Take a look at your forecast for the day today. We'll be seeing temperatures gradually warm into the mid 70s by the afternoon. Notice that afternoon we do have about 30% coverage, so not everybody is going to see rain, but there are going to be a few hit and miss showers out there this afternoon. I'll walk you hour by hour through the future cast coming up in just a bit. RJ, how do those roads look? All right, Sarah. So actually, we just got an accident just showed up here on our TransGuy traffic cameras. This is on the near northeast side. Just got TransGuy to pull up this wreck here. So it looks like a series of wrecks. You can see one a little bit further up. This is on the northbound lanes of Loop 410 at FM 78. So you see a couple of people just kind of walking back and forth on the shoulder kind of slowing down traffic in the area do not see any emergency vehicles but uh, this is definitely on Textot's radar at the moment so hopefully they get this cleared and it seems as if everyone here is okay but again accident here northbound lanes of loop 410 at fm 78 as we get a little bit closer look at some of the traffic flow and it's starting to build up here in this area again you just saw the camera uh, showing that traffic is moving in the area but again a little bit slow going there let's take you down to the south side, a little bit south of downtown. I-35 southbound at Roosevelt Avenue. We have a stalled vehicle in this area here. So this has been kind of going on for a little while as well. As you can see, there's a little bit of a traffic slowdown there on one of the lanes. Again, southbound lanes, I-35 at Roosevelt Avenue. And the other stall that we're following so far this morning is in the northbound lanes of Loop 410 at Ingram Road. So this is right across from uh, Ingram Park Mall. So just kind of be cautious if you're headed into this area. But traffic flow here does not seem to be affected too much as we take you back out there with transguide again loop 410 northbound lanes we have what appears to be an accident couple of accidents in this area right here the near northeast side northbound lanes of loop 410 at fm 78 so hopefully crews get this cleared out in the near future mark 70 back to you guys to some late breaking news happening right now a man barricaded inside a home in southeast bear county katrina weber is live at the scene katrina good morning can you tell us so far well, good morning. Uh, yeah, sheriff's uh, deputies are here. They have a house surrounded here down at the corner. This is right across the street, sort of catty corner to East Central High School, if you're familiar with this area. This is the 9800 block of New Sulphur Springs. Uh, we are near, uh, as I said, near the high school, and deputies have been trying to get a man to come out of this house. Uh, they say that he is in there with two children, 9 and 12 years old, and he is a suspect in a family violence case. Uh, they have been talking to him. We've heard them shouting through the windows, uh, also standing. Uh, we don't want to give too much away by showing too much, but they're standing around the house and they've been trying to communicate with him inside. Uh, we don't know if he's armed or th what the situation is. We're waiting to talk to the public information officer who we understand is on the way. But in the meantime, uh, they do have uh, the area near the high school blocked off. We have some of the East Central Police here as well. and They're keeping traffic sort of away from this area, away from the high school. And they have a very increased presence at the school itself to keep the students who are here safe. But uh, if you can avoid the area, they do recommend that. In the meantime, we're not sure how long the situation is going to go on. But again, they do tell us there's a man inside this house with two children, and he's the suspect in a family violence case. Reporting live in Southeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
All right, Katrina, thank you. And to our top story this morning, three men are facing charges after New Braunfels police found more than $260,000 in cash, guns, and 11 pounds of marijuana. 24-year-old Aaron Dittman Jr., 26-year-old Jonathan Martinez, and 25-year-old Eduardo Munoz all facing possession of marijuana and engaging in organized criminal activity charges. Witnesses told police they were acting suspicious and that the money and guns could be seen in plain sight. Police were called and they searched their vehicle leading to that discovery. All three men are from the Fort Worth area. An elderly man who disappeared yesterday morning up in Georgetown has been found safe. This is a picture of 84 year old James DeLine. The silver alert was discontinued last night, apparently during the night beat at 10. No other details were released at this time. Every year, the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce participates in SA to DC. During the trip, local leaders go to the nation's capital, advocate for the city, and this year was full of key priorities. The interim president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce joined leading SA yesterday to discuss the history, goals, and logistics of the trip. Dave Peterson joined us live. We talked about a lot. We talked about how more than 150 representatives from San Antonio, they went all the way to Washington, D.C., advocating for our priorities. Those priorities, they range from transportation to military to technology like Port San Antonio. We talked about past successes. We talked about this trip in particular. Take a listen to the conversation. Speaker of the House Ryan, a few years ago, when he met our group, he said, you know, it really sends a message when you get that many people in the room. And so this year we've advocated with the Department of Defense uh, for innovative ways to support the DOD and the Air Force with uh, Port San Antonio. In 2015, we were able to get funding for the new federal courthouse. In 2021, VIA was included in the president's budget for the first time. In 2020, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers work plan included the final $26 million reimbursement to Bear County for advancing a portion of the federal share of the Mission Reef. Every Sunday at 8 a.m., we talk to leaders in and around our San Antonio community talking about timely issues. So join us next Sunday at 8 a.m. For now, though, you can go to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com, check out the full conversation with Dave Peterson, learn more about the SA to D.C. trip. And guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. In your morning headlines, we have an update on the restoration of the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and a household appliance explodes in a woman's kitchen. Diving deep for Easter eggs and the Easter Bunny visits the zoo in Chile. David Sears is here with all of these stories. You can always count on the Easter Bunny to take care of his or her friends. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. We'll show you that in just a second. But first, the day after Easter seems like an appropriate time for an update on the rebuilding of that landmark, the Notre Dame Cathedral in France. Construction workers continue. They are focusing on the spire. Now, this is that searing image of the spire on fire and then it just collapsed right through the roof of the cathedral and this is what will replace that image carpenters moving tons of oak around and working through a painstaking process by hand down to the millimeter they're cutting and fitting the oak pieces together for the spire and the roof of the cathedral the iconic landmark is scheduled to reopen sometime next year to the public five years after that devastating fire you are looking at a big mess in the kitchen of Lenore Satterway, who lives in North Carolina. You notice you don't see much of a refrigerator. That's because the whole mess was caused by the fridge. It just flat out exploded. The fridge is in pieces, the food all over the place. The explosion so powerful, the wall across the kitchen was damaged. And I just saw the refrigerator doors on the floor here and the holes in the wall. Uh, the whole wall was all knocked in and the other side of the wall too. So here's the twist. Lenore knew something was up with that fridge, so she called a repairman. He showed up, took it apart, looked it over, said it was the freezer fan and he had to order the part. But before the part came in, boom, explosion. Frigidaire, the maker of the fridge, is, on, is in contact with Lenore and they are trying to figure out exactly what happened. And the good news is she does have insurance. Yep, that is the Easter Bunny in a scuba suit trying to get away from all the little guys. No, 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 no. The bunny is actually hiding Easter eggs for a snorkelers and divers Easter egg hunt. This is taking place in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. The Easter egg hunt happens every year. The hunt raises awareness about the marine conservation area, and it also raises money for needy children. The sanctuary covers 3,800 square miles. It also contains the Florida Reef. That's a lot of space to hide some Easter eggs when you think about it. The only barrier coral reef in North America and third largest coral reef in the world. Ooh, <coughs> excuse me. And if you are the Easter Bunny, you know you got to take care of your friends. 
This is the zoo in Chile. The Easter Bunny leaving some special treats for the red pandas, snow leopards, and lemurs, among some other friends. The Easter eggs are ostrich eggs. They collect them throughout the year for just this moment right there. Oh, you gotta have the gorilla eating an Easter egg, right? Look, look, look. <laughs> just, I don't know, this looks kind of funny. The eggs are colored with non-toxic toxic materials, and of course they put you know healthy stuff inside. Yes, they candy did. And, yeah. Very colorful. Yes. All right, David, right before we began, you mentioned some late breaking news. Yeah. And we just got some details on that, yeah. folks, and we want to let you know about it before we go to commercial break. Uh, police are reporting multiple casualties as they respond to a shooting at a bank in a building in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. So the Louisville Metro Police Department said on today that on Twitter there was an ongoing situation. They asked people to avoid that area and that there are multiple casualties. And they also said in a tweet they are describing it as an active aggressor. We also understand that Kentucky's governor is on the way to Louisville. But again, this is a late breaking situation. We have no other information right now. We are posting stories right now as we get more information on our website at ksat.com. Right now, 909, 63 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Up next, care packages are proof that a little piece of home goes a long way. And now a local nonprofit is collecting items for troops overseas. How you can contribute in just moments. Night 12, a local nonprofit hopes to collect 20,000 pounds of items to, for care packages to send to U.S. service members presently deployed. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the simplest items can mean the most. I think in care packages, what you get is a little piece of something to remind you of being at home. You get some of your favorite things. Angela Johnson retired from the U.S. Army in 2015. I was deployed in Iraq from 20, 2004 to 2005. Johnson remembers receiving care packages. Cards, letters, even with my daughter, she was in her class and her teacher had everyone send like little letters and notes. Today, she works for the nonprofit Soldiers Angels and helps put together care packages for deployed service members with some of their favorite things. The nonprofit recently kicked off its annual Go Camel Care Package Collection Drive. The popular items, of course, are Slim Jims. They're always at the top of the list um, and any type of beef jerky products, but trail mix is popular. There are a lot of different items they will include in the care packages, but it's about the simple things that mean the most, including the downtime items from puzzles to cards. President and CEO of Soldiers Angels, Amy Palmer, says their goal this year is to collect 20,000 pounds of items in celebration of the nonprofit's 20th anniversary. Our goal this year is to have a military vehicle come and fill the military vehicle at the end of the campaign with the 20,000 pounds of items. You can ship the collected items to Soldiers Angels until June 30th. For Johnson, she is passionate about this campaign and hopes it brings many smiles. Working here at Soldiers Angels, it was just a dream that I always wanted to do is just to make someone's life a little happier. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. 914. I know we needed the rain, but yeah. we had a little break this weekend. You know what? It was great for any kind of Easter outdoor activities. I know I had a good weekend enjoying some time outdoors. And this afternoon, there is the potential for a pop-up shower or thunder shower. So let's get down to it. Let's talk about our weather for the day today. I do not anticipate widespread rain by any means. It's just that some who need a little bit of rain are going to be able to see some of that today. A lucky few at least. 63 degrees outside right now. You can see it is cloudy around San Antonio. I'm showing you the satellite and the temperatures. You can see where there are holes in the clouds here in this dark color. So seeing a little bit of sunshine in the mix up near Canyon Lake, but we're socked into cloud cover around San Antonio right now. But we are going to be able to see a little bit more sun than we saw yesterday for sure as we go on throughout the day. It's 60 in Seguin. Good morning in Hondo. It's 65. 60 in Bandera. 61 in Kerrville and 56 in Comfort. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radar. As you can see, it is quiet around San Antonio right now, but as we take a trip up to the north, closer to Fredericksburg, a few very light rain showers pushing south into Gillespie County. And then off to the west, there are still a few light rain showers out closer to Del Rio uh, and nearer to Brackettville and Uvalde as well. They're very, very light rain showers, but this is indicative of some energy to our north. I'm going to show you the weather setup here. And what we're going to show you is notice that there's been a few of these showers and storms that have originated up north and started to fall apart as they move to the south. This is along a trough 
of low pressure. That is just a fancy meteorological word for an area, a long area where there's a little bit of low pressure in the atmosphere. Now, these are not often very effective rainmakers for us in San Antonio, but they do provide a little bit of energy. So as we go along throughout the afternoon, we could see a couple of pop up showers again. Few and far between, but coverage should be about 30% this afternoon after about uh, the lunch hour. And you can see that even for some in the evening commute, they may have to turn on their windshield wipers once or twice. Just to give you a heads up of what you can expect for the day today, we do not anticipate any kind of severe weather or anything like that. So just be a bit of a nuisance for the evening commute. And again, our coverage is only going to be about 30%. But we'll be keeping an eye on the radar for you, keeping you informed on that case out weather authority app. There's a radar and we'll send you any kind of information you need to know ahead of the evening commute. Otherwise, we'll, we will, with the loss of daytime heating, see that rain chance go down. So take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast today. We'll be around 68 at noon, mostly cloudy. We'll start to see a little bit of sunshine, a few peaks of sunshine for us into the afternoon. And again, one or two isolated pop up showers, perhaps a rumble of thunder as well. Coverage is only going to be 30%, 75 for the high. And we'll have east winds today, 5 to 10 miles per hour. It'll be a mile evening with temperatures falling into the 60s after sunset. Here's a look at highs in your neighborhood. 79 in Del Rio, 77 Creso Springs, 75 in Gonzales, 75 in Canyon Lake, 73 in Kerrville, 75 in Pleasanton, 75 in Castroville, and 75 in Seguin. Looking at rain chances this week, honestly, the only time I think we'll see any significant chance for rain is going to be on Saturday, particularly in the afternoon and evening. I'll be talking a little bit more about Saturday's rain chance coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, but just know that the week ahead, other than the isolated showers this afternoon, it's going to be pretty comfortable. Cool mornings in the 50s, afternoons warming up gradually into the 80s by Friday. Uh, humidity will work its way back into the forecast by the weekend. And again, stick around for the next half hour. I'll have more information about that chance of rain over the weekend coming up. Fantastic. Right. Thank you. And Thank you. up to 90, possibly. I know. It's going to get warm. It is that time of year. That's true. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 918, 63 degrees. Coming up next, the San Antonio Book Festival is coming up in just a few days. How a local author's latest work is bringing attention to an important issue. And welcome back. It's 921. The San Antonio Book Festival is just five days away, and we're taking a look at some of the authors that will be attending the festival. Tiffany Huertas explains how one local author is using her book to help shine a light on women who disappear or are killed around the world. Guadalupe Garcia McCall is no stranger to the struggles women face. That is why she wrote her book, Echoes of Grace, a book of fiction focusing on an 18-year-old trying to find her way after a great loss but also focusing on real life events happening daily. Well, in Echoes of Grace, one of the things that I did was think about the ma micro story and how that is actually reflecting or mirroring the macro story of violence against women, femicide, all the things that women have, to put, have been putting up with in the world for years and years. McCall hopes her book resonates with her readers and gets them thinking about changes that could be made to help women. I want people to look at this book as my call to action. How do we change policies and procedures and laws to protect women more. When it comes to the book festival, McCall is no stranger to it. She has been attending a few years now and is looking forward to sharing her love of writing to the city she calls home. Well, it's home. San Antonio's home. I've been here for the last 30 something years and um, seeing everybody come to the festival, friends, family, loved ones, ex-students, former students, new students, it's just exciting to have those conversations around literature. You will have the chance to meet McCall at the Book Festival, which takes place April 15th at the Central Library and UTSA's Southwest Campus. To learn more about McCall and the Book Festival, head to KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, back to our late breaking news now happening down in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. Police again are reporting to uh, reporting multiple casualties as they respond to a shooting in a bank building. Our producer is just now telling us that five people have now been killed and the shooter 
was neutralized earlier that was described completely different. Uh, and the investigators are describing it as an active aggressor. So witnesses who left the building told a TV station there that they heard gunfire inside the building. The FBI says agents are also responding to the shooting. We're going to continue to follow this story. And here's a live look out there right now. Right. And I want to stay with this for just a minute again. So folks probably just now kind of like, wait, what did what did you just say? We've been hurt. You know, obviously there's been a wave of school shootings in this country for years and we're all on alert for that. But again, this was not at a at a school. This was at a very busy bank in a very busy central busy business district there in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. You can see now all the huge law enforcement response, but it appears the urgency has now uh, abated and the situation may now be under control with word that the uh, active shooter may have been neutralized. Again, trying to get some more information, but we hear upwards of five, maybe six people have been killed in this incident in Louisville, Kentucky. We'll be right back. We are tracking several late breaking stories right now. Of course, the shooting in downtown Louisville, Kentucky, but also closer to home happening right now. Sheriff's invest deputies are continuing their efforts to convince a man to come out of his home in southeast Bear County. We have reports that he also has two children in there with him. Katrina Weber is live where it's happening near New Sulphur Springs and Stewart Roads. Now that's right near East Central High School. How's that affecting students and classes, Katrina? Well, we have reached out for an official statement. I'm still waiting to hear back from the East Central School District, but I can tell you that we see a very large police presence around the school. Uh, we have some East Central police officers directing traffic in that area, also all around the high school uh, to keep the situation isolated from the school itself. Now, deputies are working at a house sort of diagonally across the street. Uh, they have told us that there is a man who's a suspect in a, a domestic violence or a family violence case and that he does have two children in the home with him, nine and 12 years old. We have not heard anything about whether he is armed or what the situation is there, whether there's a, a danger present to those children in the home, but uh, sheriff's deputies definitely taking this seriously. They've been talking to him. We've heard them talking to him. Uh, we've heard them right up against the window talking to that man, uh, trying to get him to come out. But so far, it seems that this is still an active situation. And of course, we want to be very careful about what we show you about the their positions in the area, so we're, we're trying to uh, respect that. But we are expecting to get an update here in the next few minutes. We understand the public information officer is on his way and should be updating us soon. Reporting live in Southeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. Right now, downtown Louisville, police are reporting that five people have been killed and six people injured, and that five people killed, one of them being a police officer. This is after a shooting at a bank building there in Louisville. Yeah, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, do we have the live image? Can we pop that up? Thank you very much. All right, huge law enforcement response, obviously, in the middle of uh, downtown Louisville, Kentucky right now. So again, to recap, five dead, six wounded. We understand the shooter has been neutralized. And we're also hearing reports that one of the dead is a police officer. Don't know from which agency, but a number of local law enforcement agencies and the feds have also shown up the FBI there at the scene. A number of law enforcement officials still showing up there. You see the crime scene tape, a number of police, fire and EMS units there on the scene in Louisville, Kentucky. Don't know any other details about what happened. We just know that this was in a bank in downtown Louisville. A lot of people on alert because of this situation, but it now it appears that this uh, active shooter situation is now over. And we'll keep you updated online and on the air later in our new newscast. For now, let's go ahead and look outside with live cam. Start off a little cool, you know, 61 degrees now. It's not too bad, but will there be rain later, Sarah? Well, there is the potential for a few pop-up showers and storms. Not everybody is going to see rain today, but some will get an isolated shower storm. I think Personally, the bigger story right now weather wise is that we're finally going to see a little sun this afternoon uh, as after a day yesterday when we were socked into cloud cover. Take a look at temperatures out there right now. It's 63 at the airport, 65 in Honto, 63 in New Braunfels. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. You know, we're going to be warming up to about 70 by noon and it's afternoon that we'll see peaks of sunshine and yes, an isolated shower or thunder shower. Coverage is only going to be 30%, so don't bet on the rain, but just 
keep that umbrella in the back of your car if you need it. 75 for the high today. Temperatures falling into the 60s after sunset. So a mild day with a little bit of sun. Coming up, we're going to talk about your weekly weather timeline. First thing to know, of course, today a few of those hit or miss showers. This week, though, it is going to be pleasant and will gradually be warming, potentially even into the 90s by the weekend. And speaking of this weekend, some storms are possible on Saturday. I'll walk you through when we could see those storms on Saturday and show you the future cast of those hit or miss showers today. Coming up in a few minutes. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. One of the top stories this morning, a lot of questions remain after four major crashes on the west side of town. So it happened yesterday afternoon and we're told that the driver in the silver pickup truck crashed into a utility pole at the corner of Saravo and Gerald McMullen. The entire block was out without power, but CPS Energy restored it quickly. We're told one person was arrested and we are told that park police were handling the case. Now to the Pentagon assessing the damage after the leak of highly sensitive intelligence documents. Documents appear to reveal information about U.S. allies, including South Korea and Israel. They also appear to include details about the condition of Ukraine's air defense systems crucial for the war against Russia. ABC's Rhiannon Alley takes a closer look at some of the biggest concerns. This morning, the Justice Department is scrambling to find the source of what appears to be a major leak of U.S. intelligence documents. We are talking about documents that are labeled top secret, and that's as high as you can go when it comes to U.S. intelligence. ABC News has reviewed more than 30 pages of the highly classified material posted online containing what appears to be U.S. intelligence about the war in Ukraine, Russia, Iran's nuclear program, North Korea's missile program, China, and other countries. The files also allegedly show the U.S. was not only spying on adversaries, but also allies. There's a potential for damaging of U.S. relationships with some of our allies because some of this information could only have been gleaned if the United States was spying on senior leaders. And this headline in the Washington Post saying the files provide details about the near downing of a British spy plane near Ukraine last year. When do you actually put this into a newspaper or a television broadcast? Uh, but we've reached a point where these things have proliferated through Telegram, Twitter. Some documents appear to be from March 1st, showing how the U.S. and NATO were helping Ukraine. Details about casualty numbers, training schedules and weapons deliveries, and a map of the key battle raging in a city in eastern Ukraine. In at least one instance, the documents appear to be altered to favor Russia's point of view. In a statement about the leak last night, the Pentagon said its highest priority is the defense of our nation and our national security. We have referred this matter to the Department of Justice, which has opened a criminal investigation. Analysts say this could be the worst intelligence leak since Edward Snowden. But in this case, the documents appear to be more timely. The fact that these documents are out in the open and, and if they were posted close to when they were published, that makes it really scary for operational security. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. And trending right now on KSAT.com, Texas State Park officials say they may have figured out what kind of mystery creature was spotted lurking around at night in the Rio Grande Valley area. This comes after an image of the creature captured some attention on social media last week. Officials with the Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park and Mission say they think it is likely an American badger. Can't see it here, but you can check out our website at KSAT.com. And looking ahead, Fiesta San Antonio doesn't start until the end of April this year, but at KSET, we can already hear and see signs of a citywide celebration. We're excited about the possibility of having you join us for the KSET Fiesta parties at the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau parades. So tickets for both events are on sale right now on our website at KSET.com. Just scan the QR code on your screen, and it will take you to where you want to go for the Battle of Flowers. KSET insiders who buy tickets with us get admission to the exclusive KSAT party. Seats to the parade, two Las Palapas tacos and a drink, plus a chance to mingle with your neighbors and your favorite KSAT weather and news personalities. All right, so also on KSAT.com, if you're looking to snag a 2023 KSAT Fiesta medal, our giveaways have already started and run through April 27th. We've got a list of dates for the medal giveaways. But you'll need to tune into KSAT to find out where the medal giveaway is each day. You can find the full list right now on ksat.com. Good luck. 936, 64 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And if you're trying to get organized this week, you want to keep it right here. Up next, some simple things you can do that can make a big difference. And a big happy birthday to one of our news team members. Happy birthday, Jonathan Koto. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Enjoy your day. We hear he's off, so we hope he's having a good time. We'll talk to you later. Welcome back.
Fix 940. So the first season is finally over after a quick road trip to Dallas. A merciful end. David Sears and RJ Marquez here with highlights or lowlights and what comes next. Guys, it was a very, very long season. Yeah. It was one of the worst seasons in Spurs history. <laughs> it was. But hopefully, hopefully we have a light at the end of the tunnel here. Oh, yeah, um, just hope it's not because, a train coming our way. Exactly. Wow, <laughs> great. Yeah, good catch there, David. Um, yeah. Because, look, the, the Spurs obviously in a full-on rebuild. They had to do this. You remember they traded DeJounte Murray during the offseason. They had traded Derek White before that. And really, you saw it, David. I mean, once... Once we got going here, I mean, they were playing yeah. guys that should usually were in the G well, League. And then Jakob Pertl's not, not with us anymore. Jakob so traded Jakob. Yeah, traded one, Josh so. Richardson. I mean, I'm surprised they held on to Doug McDermott, but good for yeah. Doug McBuckets for sticking around all season and playing hard. So they end up with one of the worst three records in the NBA, which mm -hmm. means they've got one of the best chances of getting the top pick. Those, mm -hmm. those three teams have like a 14% chance of getting the top pick. The worst the Spurs can go is seven. Seven. Okay, so, so that's a, a coin good deal. Flip, a coin flip will determine uh, whether they get the worst of uh, the possibility, which would be sixth or seventh, because they and the Rockets tied for the worst, the, worst. the second worst record. Detroit had the worst. The wor Detroit yes. had the worst. So, yeah, so Detroit think had that. the worst. So, and it was interesting. Last Thursday, when, if you remember, we were in Austin for the game with Portland in Austin and, mm -hmm. and the pregame press conference pop was asked about the way things had kind of gone the end of the season sitting a lot of guys because of injuries and a lot a lot and pop goes so you're asking me if we're tanking <laughs> and, the, and the reporter goes well that was your word not mine <laughs> right yeah. so yeah. no they weren't tanking. I mean he's got and that's a okay so let's move forward there was a, this this year was absolutely stunk so let's move forward <laughs> they got to get these yeah. guys healthy Jeremy Sohan's yeah. got to get healthy Devin Vassell's got to get healthy they got about four or five guys in there that had these little nagged injuries here and there all season long well, Vassell had the had the surgery. They got to get their guys healthy. That's yeah. that's one priority that they have to take care of. This yeah, summer. definitely. I mean, that's the core of the team moving forward. Now, whatever happens with the lottery, obviously, we would like one of the top, you know, the top pick, Victor Wembayama, second pick. But the guys that are already on the roster, Kelda Johnson, yeah. Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan. That's your core right there. I thought Malachi Branham looked great towards the end yep. of the season. And Coach Pop said that Zach Collins probably going to be the starter for next year as far as the I center's concerned. Got so, no problem with that. Yeah, no, Zach Collins, I thought, had a great season. His best season, he was fully healthy throughout the entire we, Somebody just needs to go with Kelda Johnson when he goes to Bucky's and make sure he gets the, the, <laughs> the quality food at Bucky. You got to watch you it. Guys you guys hear about that? You guys hear about that? He had food poisoning the night yeah. before that Portland game in Austin. And he talked about how he always, because he played in the G League in Austin. <laughs> yeah. He played for the Austin Spurs. Uh -huh. Well, he would stop at Bucky's every time he'd go up there. Well, he stopped at Bucky's this time, but apparently he got something that wasn't so good. I wonder yeah. what he you know, got. But he, he but where did he eat before Bucky's? Yeah. That's where I want to know. He emphasized True. more and more that he hours. loves Bucky's. All right. So. Can't be the icy. <laughs> Bucky's that good. The icies are great. Yeah, the beaver, beaver nuggets. nuggets. So, yeah. <laughs> I can't go wrong with beaver nuggets. I, it's not going to stop. I don't here think here was another stop. interesting thing that happened over the weekend, though. Mm -hmm. Now, you, we, we use the word tank. The Dallas Mavericks got accused Ooh. of tanking, yeah. and the NBA is investigating Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, actually, yeah, the Mavs were in line for a play-in game, and they ended yep. up sitting for their main starters and then pulling Luka Doncic in the second quarter of really a must-win game. It was very bizarre, yeah, very bizarre there. But, um, but yeah, David, you mentioned the Spurs kind of moving ahead here as we get set for the mm -hmm. lottery. Pop yesterday did say that he will pay attention, obviously. He said yeah. he's not blind to everything, so he's going to be watching the ping-pong balls. Maybe that's an indication that he's – Going to come back for another season. He's coming I don't, back. He got, yeah, I don't imagine after, that. He after suffering through this, this year, I, would, yeah, I, don't I don't think, think he'd so. just like walk no. away from this. He's no. got to get it headed in the right direction next yeah. year. So I think he'd come back for at least one more, if not two. But I think he'd be back for at least one more just so yeah. he can get this thing. Especially if they get that first or second pick. And I you know, mean, there were, you're set up for the next, you know, five to ten years. Many oh, times he was talking about how he enjoyed coaching these young guys. They have to go back to basics because he, he emphasized on more than one occasion. You show a lot of character they, when you're losing. Mm -hmm. And there is there, there Popovich. is there's Popovich. <laughs> he was just he was just uh, yeah. talking about how the character that these guys showed, and he was yeah. talking about how 
most of these, like four of them, the four 19-year-olds yeah. would be sophomores in college. They would still be learning footwork and moves wow. and things like that. So he's got to go all the way back to that and teach them. And he was comparing that to when Tim Duncan lasted four years in college. He came to the Spurs with all those yeah, Tim was already a credentials. Man there, he knew yeah. how to, yeah. he knew the footwork, he knew the shots, he knew where to take them, when to take them, how to take them. And so he's got to go back. And I think he actually enjoys going back and actually coaching these kids. Yeah. And so I don't think he's going to miss out on, on a year when they can get another <sighs> top draft pick. Yeah. And he's yeah. got some, uh, got some experience. Yeah, we say? I would say so. Yeah, that's what this year was about. Development experience, yep. especially for all these young guys here. So the playoffs get started here with the playing games. Eh, Lakers versus Timberwolves, Thunder Pelicans. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens here in the West. Hey, what was the yeah, date like y'all are supposed to write down? Uh, the draft day? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. Lottery day, maybe? Day. Lottery day, you remember? <laughs> Lottery day. We play lottery oh, no. once a week, don't we? So. Yeah. I not forgot. that. Not that one. <laughs> no, but I, I told forgot. you guys. Yeah, I know you did. I what was the forgot. most important day in the attention. future? The first most important day is May 16th. Okay. <laughs> May 16th. That's what we were going to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I completely right. forgot. Right? May 16th, right? May 16th, now I'm yes. even questioning to myself. Okay. Yeah. That's the lottery. That's, that's when, when, we'll that's when we out. find out where the Spurs will be picking in the June NBA right. draft. Hey, it's David, a new we're just yes. checking to make sure that okay. you could remember the May date 16th. that you had committed to. Um, <laughs> speaking of very important dates here, kind of switching gears a little bit. Uh, okay, so last August took up the total station effort here Whoa. to put together one of the biggest yeah. events KSAT has ever done, and we're talking about the KSAT Biscuit Classic. 2023. This time, mm -hmm. we've added a game on Friday night in the Alamo Dome, and we've got three on Saturday, and tomorrow at 10 a.m., the huge announcement on mm -hmm. all the teams that are going to be playing in this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. So four we've got games, four games, eight, eight teams. Eight schools. Wow. Man, oh, man. Awesome. Yeah, and so, we want to do a bigger, unbelievable showing last year with those teams. It's going to be a different lineup this year. So really excited, really excited to see what we have in store for the KSAT. And we pushed RJ a little this morning, give us some hints on who was in, and we're not going to reveal that. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, teams tomorrow. from the area. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> From the area. Thank you, well, we David. Hope. Okay. He's from the area. That's, that's, that's who's going to play. Yeah. And for you non-football fans, remember, that's a great ticket. That is an absolutely great day to come out and support maybe your local high school or for right. just your generic football fan. You just like to watch football. You can't beat a day in the Dome watching three games and maybe even come on the night before yeah. and watching awesome. the fourth game. So what a great weekend. Can't wait Here to reveal go. those matchups right. tomorrow. 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 Go RJ, Spurs go. Brighter thank, days are ahead. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Brighter days are ahead. Yeah, we are. Yeah, it'll be fun. Always a great turnout. A lot of fans. And, of course, you know, Sarah was out there last year as well. She I was. did. I kicked a field goal. Yes, you did. You did it well. It is the proudest moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take a look at the radar right now. We do have some showers up near Fredericksburg right now in Gillespie County. This is very light rain. So if you're in Gillespie County, you might have to turn on your windshield wipers once or twice. Just get a quick uh, little car wash out there, free car wash in Fredericksburg. And we've got an isolated shower out near Brackett right now in Kenny County. Otherwise, things are fairly quiet around San Antonio, but this is indicative that we do have some energy out there. And as we look at our weather setup, you can see very clearly that storms have developed uh, and then they fall apart as they move to the south. They've developed along this trough of low pressure, an elongated area of low pressure that's going to continue to push south throughout the day today. So as we head into the afternoon, there is the potential for an isolated pop up shower. Not ever Everybody is going to be seeing rain. In fact, your chances are you won't see any rain. However, we do have a 20 to 30 percent coverage of those isolated showers this afternoon from about 1 to 5 p.m. Now, again, that could impact your evening commute, but we'll have to be watching that carefully. We do not anticipate any kind of severe weather. And by the way, again, odds are you won't see any rain. There's just that small possibility there, about 20 to 30 percent chance. So looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy skies for us throughout most of the day. We'll have peaks of sunshine. It's cloudy right now. And then looking ahead to the afternoon, again, a 30 percent chance for an isolated thunder shower. Most of this is if you do get a rain is just going to be some brief downpours, but there could be a rumble of thunder mixed in there. 75 for the high and then temperatures will be falling into the 60s after sunset. Here's a 
look at highs in your neighborhood. 73 in Bernie, 75 in Rio Medina, 75 in Floresville and in Pleasanton, 75 in Gonzales, 75 in Seguin, New Braunfels. You'll be at 75 degrees today, 77 in Yavali, a little bit warmer off to the west. And we're going to be gradually seeing a warm up here throughout the coming days. So much so that by Thursday and Friday we'll be in the 80s and by Saturday even the potential to be in the 90s. But the good news is as we're warming up in the coming days, the humidity is going to be pleasantly low tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, so it'll feel great even though temperatures are going to be warmer. One exception to this is by Friday and Saturday, the humidity is going to be back and that is when we're going to be the warmest on Friday and Saturday. And speaking of Saturday, that's when we have our chance for some showers and storms, at least the best chance in the next seven days, even better than today. Now this is a snapshot of the future cast right at about 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Low pressure system over the Gulf is actually going to be bringing us drier air. That's why it's going to feel good. But as we head into Friday and Saturday, the humidity will be building and by Saturday in the afternoon and evening, there is the potential for a few showers and storms during the weekend Saturday, mainly in the afternoon and evening. Right now, the potential is only about 40%, but we'll be keeping you updated. It's something that you're going to want to check on uh, just about every day as we adjust that forecast for Saturday. Otherwise, a pretty nice week ahead for us. Okay, thank you, Sarah. 950 64 degrees. We'll be right back with more on that late breaking news from Louisville, Kentucky in just moments. All right, back to that late breaking news, a deadly mass casualty event in Kentucky. We'll take a live look at the scene in just a moment, but here's what we know so far that happened in downtown Louisville, Kentucky, and police are reporting that five people have been killed in a shooting there at a bank building downtown Louisville. Also, six others were hospitalized. This is an aerial view right now, courtesy of WLKY. Uh, this is a report, again, this happened around 8.30 this morning. Uh, a lone shooter is apparently dead after exchanging gunfire with law enforcement officers. So the situation appears to be over. Uh, happened around 8.30. We're expecting a press conference coming up in as soon as a half an hour. But as with situations like this, oftentimes uh, there's a kind of a blur of a uh, fog of information that comes through and things do get delayed. But we're hoping to hear something from law enforcement officers, including possibly the FBI and ATF coming up hopefully before our noon newscast today. And witnesses who left that bank building told a TV station over there that they heard gunfire inside the building. There was also some eyewitnesses that said the shooter appeared to have been armed with a long gun. But again, we are hearing that that shooter has been killed. That's right. All right, so uh, five dead, six injured. The shooter has been neutralized again at a bank, not a school but a bank in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. We'll keep you updated on KSAT.com. Look for more coming up in our later newscast. Sarah. Yeah, I do anticipate some uh, pop-up showers this afternoon, but coverage is only going to be about 30%. It would just kind of be that nuisancey rain that while you're trying to go around, you might have to turn on those windshield wipers once or twice, use a little extra caution on the roads. Otherwise, we are going to see skies gradually clear. And for most of the week, it's going to be comfortable with cool mornings and warm afternoons. By Friday, though, and Saturday, humidity does work its way back in. We're warmer on Saturday. We probably will get up to 90 degrees. And then later on Saturday, I do anticipate some sh showers and storms to keep an eye on. All right, but not too bad this week. Thank you, Sarah. Have a good day.